Termsets GDPR Scanner allows organisations to discover, report and take actions on their sensitive data. Let's start by running a discovery um, within a simple file share. We simply need to add a configuration and give it a name. Um, in my case, we're going to be looking in a file share, but you could be looking inside uh, SharePoint Online, SharePoint servers, and we can plug in other data sources into the connection framework. But uh, in this example, we'll simply choose a folder called HR and save that configuration. So we've said now where to look for the content. The second part of the configuration is to decide what to look for within that data. When we click the Edit Rules button, we have many hundreds of rules available to us um, and we can just choose whichever ones are appropriate for us. So we'll have um, someone's name, uh, perhaps a company name or organisation. We could choose uh, bank accounts and credit card numbers. We've got lots of rules around uh, credit cards, uh, perhaps email addresses, um, something to do with HR, perhaps uh, ethnicity. We could also program in bespoke rules for employee numbers um, and we can modify these rules. Um, the rules use various techniques to uncover the information. But for this simple demonstration, we'll save that, update that. We've now got a new configuration that's going to read the HR documents. So let's run that scan against the content. And what we'll do is open each of those files, extract the text content from them. And if it's an image or a scan piece of paper, we'll optically character recognize um, the content. And we're running that content through the rules engine. So we can see in this simple example, um, 56 documents were read in around 13 seconds. So let's take a look at the results. Each of the scans score their results in a separate database and there are a number of ways of interacting with the information we've now discovered. Perhaps the simplest way is directly within the application is to click the report icon. When we've clicked the report icon we're looking directly inside our database for the information that's been discovered. And what we can see here is each file that's been scanned how long it took to scan, um, whether it was successful, and then we can see the score, which is um, the total value of all of the rules that were fired against that particular document. So I'm gonna sort these by the, the highest scores here. And what we're able to do is directly click on a document and see the sensitive data that the engine discovered. Here we can see we've got four rules that uh, fired um, a correct match within this document. We have one instance of a credit card with a score of 10. And these scores can be um, obviously changed to suit your requirements. Um, we have six occurrences of an email address um, that added a score of five. Um, we have five occurrences of people's names and we have five occurrences of an organizational name. We can also export the results directly to a comma separated file for analysis in Excel or any other business intelligence tool that you wish to connect to. Uh, we do this simply by clicking the export icon, choosing a file name and saving that file. That will give an output similar to this, which allows you to see all of the files, um, each of the rules that have fired, the values we've discovered um, and the various weights of the engine as well as some other information. So we could. Uh, very easily, for example, find all documents that contain credit card information um, and produce that as a simple report. As well as discovering and reporting on our data, we can also take actions. If we go back to our home page and go to our reporting area, we have two built-in reports that are capable of taking actions on the data. The first is a subject access request. Let's imagine um, a person called David Roth contacted uh, the organisation and wanted to do a subject access request. We can create this directly in the application. We can log the time the request was first uh, received by us. Um, we can complete some details around the data usage and the third party sharing should we require. Um, and then we can choose either all of the areas that the application scanned or we could pick a particular area. In this case, we'll uh, do our HR folder. Um, once we've saved that, we're then able to create search criteria. So uh, simple search may be that we're simply looking for any document that contains uh, the name David Roth, like so. We could also add in uh, further clauses. So for example, we may also say uh, D Roth, 
um, or we may want to um, further filter this down by using some and statements so we may um, apply some further rules so for example we may ask for his customer reference or his postcode or something else that we could add in to ensure that we're only finding the details appropriate for this particular uh, person. In my case I'll, I'll keep this simple we'll just look for this person's name within here. Um, once that's saved we can now run a subject access request against this person's details and what we're presented with here is within the area that we've been searching we've discovered these various files um, and within here, each of these files, we can see this, this document contains five people's names and one of them is indeed David Roth. Um, if we wanted to check that, we could go to any one of these documents and we would be able to um, check inside the document to ensure that um, we did indeed have that particular person's details. So here we can see we've got David Roth within a particular document. Once we've actioned the subject access request, we'll also be able to produce two types of reports. First of all, we can produce a Word document that can be PDF'd that can be sent externally in the organisation. So let's hit our export button and create a document for the subject access request. If we wish to build a report internally to send to somebody else to action, we can also create an Excel spreadsheet which will contain some further details to allow you to action that. So let's create that too. Let's take a look at those two reports. Here's the Word document report that we produced, um, which clearly shows the subject access request details. We can see when the request was received, when we generated the request, what we looked for, and then a table of results which will show where the information was, the type of information, and the reason that it's been returned. Finally, we have the two fields, uh, should we wish to share the data usage and third-party sharing for these documents. The internal Microsoft Excel report um, contains similar information but has links to each of the files as well as the uh, details contained within them. Moving on from the subject access request report, we can then move to a right to be forgotten state. If we click on the right to be forgotten icon, we can add a new report in this area. Again, we can log the date that the right to be forgotten was initially logged. Um, we can add some notes should we wish, and then we can associate it to a subject access request. So we'll use the David Roth subject access request. When we run this report, we'll have a similar dashboard to the subject access request, but you can now see that we have actions within the content. Um, depending on the details within the document, for example, if we look at this first one, here I can see that there are a number of people included within, within this document. So we probably wouldn't want to delete the document in this case, and um, we may wish to redact the document. If we were to redact, we can simply click on the redact icon. Um, it will confirm what we should be redacting from this document and open it up in the appropriate application. We could then find our particular piece and we could redact just that particular record should we wish. Once that's been manually redacted, the application will prompt to uh, confirm that you've successfully manually redacted that. We then have a full audit trail um, that that action's happened. If there was a document where we just had um, just that person's details in, we can delete those automatically with a, a simple click, and again, we'll have those details. Um, exactly the same with the subject access request. And once we've completed the right to be forgotten, we can hit the export button and produce a document that can be um, sent as that, as well as storing all of this in a full audit trail. Thank you for watching this short video where we saw the term set GDPR scanner run scans to discover information, export them to produce reports, and then use our reporting section to take actions for both subject access requests and right to be forgotten.